Hi friends, Sharon from Mad Paper Crush here. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a tutorial to show you how to make these super cute little stocking stuffer or hostess gift. And it's just basically an envelope with a notepad in it. Something perfect to stick into your purse or to carry around with you or to have to jot notes down. So you can see when you open this up, we have a cute little notebook inside where you can write down all your important things and keep them with you. And it is carried together in this nice envelope that you can close with a little winding cord. So I hope you'll join me today as we make these great hostess gifts or stocking stuffers for you to have and give away. The tools and materials that we're gonna need for this project are an envelope, and this is a greeting card envelope. Um, the size is about uh, five and a half, a little bit over five and a half inches by a little bit over four and a quarter inches. So it's one of the envelopes that fits an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper folded in fourths. So that's the size that I'm gonna be using. Um, but certainly you could use any size envelope that you want to use. Um, we also need just some, I'm using just some regular printer paper. This is kind of an off-white. You could use tea dyed paper. You could use notebook paper that has lines. You could use pages that have dots on it, whatever. This is going to be the inside of our notebook for somebody to write on. So you need some of that. And then we're also going to need two pieces of um, decorative paper. Now this one that I have, this is a 12 by 12 just scrapbook paper and it's one-sided. This is what I'll be actually lining the envelope or covering the envelope with. And then this one is also 12 by 12, but it's double-sided and it's um, a heavier, it's like a cardstock paper. So this is gonna be the outside of the notebook that will go inside of the envelope. So, you know, you can decide how you wanna do that. You could cover the envelope with cardstock if you wanted to too, but I wanted to keep the outside a little bit thinner and I like this design pretty good and then I wanted to use this for the notebook so you'll need those papers and then um, you'll also need some buttons and I'm just I've chose chosen two buttons that go with my paper you know fairly well they can be any kind of buttons that you want and some string to do the sewing for the buttons this is actually nylon cord that I'm using but you could use anything that you would normally sew these buttons on with and then the rest of the tools are a needle to sew. So make sure it's a needle. This is a yarn needle, but I just, um, I have to make sure that the needle actually goes through the holes. So you want a needle that will do that for you. And then I'm, I have a pencil. I am using this craft knife to straighten up some edges of the pages. So I'll be using that. Scissors. I'll be using this punch paper punch tool to punch the holes for when we bind the notebook. Distress ink, if you wanna use this, you can. You certainly don't have to. I'm not sure that I will for this one. We'll see how it goes once I start doing it. And then also some glue, and I'm gonna be using the Fabri-Tac glue for that. And I think, oh, and a cutter. Obviously, you need your paper cutter to mark things down. So I think that's all we'll need to do this project. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I'm gonna start by um, covering the envelope. So to do that, I need my cutter and my piece of paper that I'm gonna use to cover. And I'm just gonna measure with my pencil to give myself a border that I want. So I'm gonna do the back first. So I'm just going to line this up side to side and make a mark and try to get it even. I, I did notice in the couple that I did already, um, the envelopes aren't always straight. <laughs> so you kind of have to watch that. So I'm just making a little mark because that's how wide I want it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing so that I know how long I want it to be. And I'm just trying to do a, a pretty small border. I don't want it to go all the way to the edge because I don't want it to go over the edge and you know possibly start to come away, to peel away. 
So that's what I'm doing there. Now I have to find my marks because that's, you don't, you know. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to go up to just about where it is. So I'm not cutting the entire paper across. I'm going to try to conserve as much paper as I can here. And then I'll do the same thing. So this is going to be my back piece here. And I think that worked out pretty well. And I'm going to cut all my pieces before I do any gluing, just so we have it all done. Um, now for the flap, the top flap here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up, giving myself, once again, a little bit of a border. And, and you can see how this envelope, it's not even even. It's not it's not even even. <laughs> it's not even. But you can see how wide this side is and then how small this one is. I don't know. These envelopes are crazy. I'm sure they weren't real expensive. Maybe that's why. I don't know. <laughs> but all I'm going to do is I'm just going to very lightly trace the edge of this flap so that I know how far I need to cut and when I cut I'm just going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut giving myself a border so I kind of had decided maybe I think it was like maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so is kind of the border I was giving myself so I'm just going to cut inside that pencil line that I made giving myself about that same border so that it will fit inside the flap, not go over the edge of it. So let's see how I did. And then usually what I have to do is, you know, straighten things up um, that I've either, you know, gotten wrong or, or did wrong there. So actually that looks pretty good, except for possibly down here. I might need to cut it a little bit more from this edge down. So I'm just gonna cut that in a little. Let's see how that looks on that side. I think that looks pretty good. Actually, now I think the whole thing looks better. So you can see how I've left myself a teeny tiny border, just so you can see a little bit of that envelope there. Okay, so that piece is done. And then um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the front cover here. So once again, I don't know why, but these envelopes are not real even. You can see here how that's kind of got that weird shape there. And I'm probably just going to go over that a little bit. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to cut this piece of paper down, this little piece that I already have started. And actually, I think I'm going to need to... it this way here so I know how long to make it. So I'm just going to cut a piece that wide. And once again, I got to find my pencil mark. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut down to just about where that goes across. Once again, I'm trying to conserve some paper here. Okay, move that out of the way. And then what I can do, I'm gonna double check because I do have a little bit of a cut in my paper here. So I'm gonna see if I can cut that off, which I absolutely can. Okay, so before we do this then, I'm just gonna cut that bottom part off since I have a little bit of a cut there and I don't want that to show up on my envelope here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this and slip it inside here. And I wanna make sure it goes all the way down because we want it to fit down to the bottom. And then I'm going to once again trace the edge of this envelope that I want to use. And I, you know, it has this weird little thing here and I probably won't cut exactly that way because I don't really want that to show too much. And then once again, I'm going to make sure I cut on a border with a border inside that line that I made. 
And then if I have to cut a little piece off the bottom, I will do that as well. I don't leave that much of a border on this side. So I have to check that. Okay, everything looks pretty good except for this side. I need to cut a little bit more off that side, which I had kind of figured because I didn't quite go as inside of the line as I did on the other side. All right. And you can see, I just tried to make this a little bit of a smoother line on the inside there. And I think that will be okay, actually. I think I need to even take a little bit more off of that. But just down here. That looks better. Okay. Now we can, um, I'm just going to glue two parts on right now. And, and the front piece that we just did is one of the ones I don't, is the one I don't want to glue on. So I'm going to glue the back piece on and the flap on. Now here's where if you wanted to do some distressing, you could. And I'm not going to do a lot of distressing. I think I'm just going to take my, um, my distress ink and just put it along the edges where my cuts were so that if there's any kind of white showing that I'm just knocking that off a little bit, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to really go in and distress it too much. This paper that I'm using is, is distressed enough, I think for this. Now I'm going to be using my Fabri-Tac here and I'm going to do the flap first. And you can use any kind of glue here. I do like to use the Fabri-Tac because it does give me a minute to readjust or reposition things if I need to. So that's one of the reasons I really like this glue. And let's go ahead and do the back piece as well. Okay, now we have our envelope partly done. Now the reason I waited for this one is because I want to be able to put the button on this one before it gets glued down because it would be hard to sew the button on if I had to do it inside of this envelope. So I'm going to wait to put that down until I put the button on. Now, before I do that though, I wanna just kind of line this up where I might wanna have it so I kind of know where I want my buttons and I can mark that on my paper. And it looks like this paper might just be perfect to kind of see if you can see that little design here. This might be perfect almost right inside of that design. And then this one should be up a little bit there. So I'm just going to make a little mark for the one above and I almost don't even need to do the one down here because I want it to be, I think, right inside this little design. So, but if you, you know, don't have a uh, paper lined up like mine did this time, then you can just put a little mark here too. So you know how low it is. Um, you want to be sure you don't have it too high that you can't get the envelope open. You know, you want to have it down just a little bit from the edge of the flap so that it, um, you know, can open without obstruction there. Okay, so let's get on to the next step. 
Okay, so for stability, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this little piece of scrap cardstock that I had in my scrap bin, and I'm going to glue this to the back side of this paper. Since I'm not using cardstock to cover the envelope, um, it's a little bit flimsier than I would want to, you know, when I'm sewing on the button there. So I am just going to put a little piece of cardstock here um, for sturdy, to make it sturdy. And if you are using cardstock, you probably won't need to do this. And we just need to be sure that when we glue it down, you know, it actually goes where we're going to be gluing our button. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be about right here. And once again, my Fabrifix gives me a little bit of leeway time to let that go. Okay, so we're going to just let that set up for a minute so that it's nice and dry. And then we'll actually we'll let that go and we'll do the top button first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my nylon cord that I'm using. You could use um, string or thread of some sort if you wanted to. And for the top button, I'm going to cut this pretty long because this is what I'm going to use for the winding part to actually close. So I'm going to cut this. I don't even know how long, but I'm not going to do a whole lot of sewing. Let's see. This is probably about two and a half, maybe three three feet long or so, something like that, just about. And you can always cut it down later, obviously. And I'm going to thread my yarn needle. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put my first um, hole through there so that I can line up my button here. And I'm just basically going to, to sew a crisscross in here. I don't want to get too fancy. I don't want to have too much, you know, string that's going through. And I'm leaving myself a little tail so that I can tie things down. And actually, now that I've gone um, through one set of holes there, I am going to just tie this so that it stays in place. So let's go ahead and just put in a double knot here, if I can do that while I'm videoing. <laughs> okay, so that holds it in place. And I think that looks pretty good. And we'll come back and um, finish that off because we're gonna cover this part too. So that will be held in place even better when we get done. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go up, see if I can do this here. And I'm just going to make the other part of the X. And like I said, the this sewing part, yes, it does hold it on, but it's really more for decoration more than anything. So once I have my X on here, I'm going to tie this one more time and whoops, I hate when I do that. Sometimes when I'm sewing, I sew through <laughs> the other piece there. So let's see if I can figure out how to get that out. Okay. Sorry about that, friends. So I had to, like I said, I first of course caught that piece of nylon thread and sewed the other part right through it and it wouldn't let me tie it real easily. So I got that out and I'm going to do another double knot now that I have the X the way I want it. Okay, so we have our button on that side. And then what I'm going to do before I cut it off is I'm actually going to take my needle and go up through the paper but not through the buttonhole again. So I'm coming out right below the button. And this is gonna be our tail that we're going to make um, into our closure. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to wrap my thread around and I'm going to put my needle through twice. Whoops, you have to do it while it's around there here and then pull it tight. So that's how I'm gonna tie it off on the top here. So I'm just going to put this around And put that through once and then put it through twice so I have a 
double knot going there, and then I'm just gonna pull it real tight so that the knot goes underneath there. Okay, and then we're gonna leave this long. So we'll probably cut it down once we get the other button on and we see how much space we need, but we're gonna leave this on because that's gonna be our tie. All right, so now let's check and see if our base is dry, which I think it is. So now we can do the same thing and sew the button onto the bottom part. Now this one, I, I'm not going to leave long, so I'm going to cut this one a little bit shorter. So this one's maybe two feet long, just about two feet long. But I don't need as much because this won't have any tail ends sticking out or anything. We're gonna do it the same way. So I'm going to see if I can put this through the paper and I'm just gonna sew an X leaving my tail on the back there. And let's see if I can do this without sewing through the thread again. <laughs> Okay, and once again, once we have an X, I am going to tie a double knot just to keep things in place. And actually I may, I have a whole lot of tail there. I don't need quite that much. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and put our other X in. And down through the other hole. And now we have our button sewed on this one. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Let's give it a nice double knot to secure it. And then for this one, we're going to trim the edges down because we're gonna make sure that they get hidden when we glue down the cover portion. Okay, so now you can see when I glue it on here, I'll have my ends hidden, which I'm gonna cut this one down a little bit more to make sure it doesn't stick up because that would be my luck. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna glue this down. And when I do, I am gonna make sure I put a little bit extra glue around the knot of the button um, and along the edges, just to be sure that we get those um, secured down real well. And just make sure you press it down. And I'm gonna set this aside to give it a minute to dry. We're not finished with it yet. Um, but then I'm gonna work on the notebook part so we can get that part done. Okay, so for our notebook, now I had said that this envelope holds a regular eight and a half by 11 piece of paper folded in quarters. But because we're gonna make this into a notebook that's a little bit thicker, we want our dimensions to be a little bit smaller than five and a half by four and a quarter to make sure that we leave enough room for um, the thickness of our notebook. So what I'm gonna do, I already cut some of these papers, but I'm gonna cut my inside papers and I'm just using plain printer paper you can use whatever you'd like here to write on. You could even do it a junk journal style, you know, if you would like to do that as well. So what I'm going to do, instead of cutting it down five and a half, I'm actually going to cut it down about 
five and three eighths. That's gonna be the height that I would like here. And then I'm going to make sure my other side is the same width. So there should be just about a quarter of an inch that we're cutting off of these pieces of paper. And now for my notebook, I cut five pieces of paper. So I'm going to have 10 pieces of paper and then when we fold it in half, it'll have 20 sheets. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I must have miscounted. I'm not sure how I can get nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, there we go. <laughs> okay, so that those are my in inside pages. And then with my cardstock, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut this down to about five and three eighths height. And then the width I want to be, now normally it would be eight and a half, but once again, I'm going to cut it down to be a little bit less than eight and a half. So normally it would be eight and a half. I'm going to cut it down to eight and three eighths so that once again, we've given some room for um, the height and the width of everything coming together. So now I'm just going to use my scoreboard. You don't need to. You could just fold this in half if you wanted to there. Um, just find it easier if I can score things. So because I cut it a little bit less than eight and a half, I am just centering it on my board so that I have um, a pretty even space. So I'm going to Mark it at eight and, or I'm sorry, four and a quarter, and hopefully I did that right. We'll see once I fold it. Now it's pretty close. I may have to cut things down a little bit, but I think that looks pretty good. So this is going to be my front cover of my the notebook that goes on the inside. And then all I'm going to do with these sheets is I'm just going to fold them all together at once. and see how they fit inside here. And they should fit top and bottom pretty good, which they do. But you can see I have all of this um, stuff sticking out on the end because it's pretty thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it all together and using my ruler and my craft knife, I am going to try to cut all of that extra off. So, and I'm just going to make sure that I have it pretty well secured inside of the cover so that I know I'm not taking too much off. And I'm just going to line this up with the end of the cover. And I'm going to do this in several strips just to make it easier on myself. So I'm just going to keep cutting through until I don't have any papers left at the bottom here. And there we go. So now we have our notebook nice and straight. I can get rid of these schniblets here. And then what we're going to do is I am going to corner punch, I think, my notebook. You certainly don't have to do this, but I think I want to have the ends a little bit rounded here. So I'm just going to take these and round the corners of both the cover and the inside pages. And I'm just going to do a couple at a time.
Okay, now that we have our notebook all ready to go, we're going to sew it together. So I'm just going to grab a couple of binder clips. You don't need them if you can hold it together. I just find it easier to use the binder clips to hold everything together while I'm sewing. I'm just going to make sure my pages are lined up on the inside where I want them. And then I'm just going to put the binder clips one on each side so that they hold everything where I want them. Now I'm gonna use the same cord that I use to put the buttons on so everything matches nicely. And for this, you've seen me do a three hole pamphlets stitch many times, probably if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time. So I'm not going to, to go through that. I'll speed, speed up through that, but I'm just going to sew it with a three hole pamphlets stitch. And what I'm going to do before I start doing any stitching is I'm going to use my paper piercer to punch my holes. And I'm just going to totally do this by eye. I'm going to do a middle hole and then one on each side about a half an inch up from the bottom. And don't stick yourself, be careful with this tool. All right, so now I've got my holes and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start at the outside and sew this together. Okay, now that we have our notebook sewed and ready to go, we are going to go ahead and finish the envelope. And all we need to do is we need to cover this inside. So you can cover it with the same paper that you used for the outside paper if you want, or you could use something a little bit contrasting. I'm gonna use a little piece of contrasting paper just so that it you know shows the difference there. And I think this is, this was just a scrap that I had in my bin and it fits pretty good right down in there. And you don't need to go all the way down for this one because we really just wanna be sure the top flap is covered and enough is covered down here to go below the notch there. So I'm just gonna slide it in until it's down below the notch. And then I'm going to once again with my pencil on the other side mark where my flap is and then cut that out. Once again, giving myself a little bit of a border. So that all the sides match. Let me just make sure that's going to work. It looks pretty good except for this little side here. I don't know what that was. And then the next thing that I wanna do before I glue is, is mark where my fold should go. So I'm gonna put this right where I think I want it to be glued down. I'm gonna hold it down and I'm just going to make my crease there where I want my fold to be. So now I kind of know where my fold is before I glue it down. And I'm also gonna take my Distress Ink and once again, just do the very edges of this piece so that the whites aren't showing so much. Okay, and now to glue this down, I'm going to glue just the bottom part first so that it's, um, I don't have so much wet glue all over it while I'm trying to put it down. So I'm just going to do just this bottom piece first. 
And I'm going to carefully put this inside the envelope and try to get it down to where the fold is. So you can see there. And then I'm going to press it down now that I've got it where I want it on there. And then I'm just going to glue, which my glue is bubbling over. That's good, I can use that. <laughs> I'm gonna glue the flap down now as well. And let's see if I can get my lid on before I bubble over again. <laughs> I think I need a, a new bottle. Okay, and I'm just gonna make sure my the end of my button is in there so that it's nice and secure. I'm gonna push my paper down around the knot there to make sure it's all secure. And then push the whole thing down. All right. And we are done. So now you can see I have my notebook. And once again, I may put something over here, but just for time's sake, you could leave it just like this. My notebook slides right in my envelope. And then I use my cord here to close my envelope. And I think this would make a really nice hostess gift or stocking stuffer, um, or even you know just something nice to give to a friend to have in their pocketbook, to have a notepad to write things down. Oh, and the last thing I wanted to mention is, you can see I have way too much string here, so I am gonna cut this down so that we don't have so much string hanging around. <laughs> and there you have it. Thank you so much for watching, friends. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. I hope you have a great week. Please subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much, friends. Bye-bye.